Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Triple Cheese synth by Yuhi. If you don't already know, Yuhi makes some of the most impressive, best sounding virtual analog synths and software synthesizers on the market. This is a freebie by them, and recently it underwent some pretty substantial updates. The most substantial update to it is changes to the UI, which makes a huge difference in my opinion. It's much easier on the eyes now. The older version, to be honest, was kind of hard to look at. And overall, I think the changes to the layout make this synth much easier to work with, especially when you're creating your own sounds. I wasn't super familiar with the synth before getting the new updated version, but after messing around with it for a while, I think the sound quality is great, even though Yuhi says it's, you know, cheesy compared to their other synths, it still ends up being better than a lot of other free synths on the market. What makes this synth really unique compared to other software synthesizers is that it doesn't use additive or subtractive synthesis. Instead, it uses comb filters to create sounds. You can see here we have three comb synth oscillators, CSO1, CSO2, and CSO3. And within each one of these, you have different sound sources. Overall, I think the sounds built into this synth and the sounds that you can create with this synth work best for genres like retro house, synth wave, anything where you're looking for older analog sound. But that's not to say that you can't use this synth for other genres like hip hop or trap or EDM. You might have to do a bit more tweaking and processing outside of the synth, but you get a really good sound out of the synth. The sound quality's great. Now I'm going to demo some of my favorite presets built into Triple Cheese.
before diving into the user manual and running you through everything that the synth can do, I'm going to show you a couple demo songs I made using the synth. Every sound you're going to hear other than the drums was made using triple cheese. I created two demo songs. One is a kind of retro house song, and the other one is a synthwave song. These aren't my best genres, so they're not going to be the most impressive songs you've ever heard. But it's going to give you a good idea of how the different sounds in triple cheese are going to work in productions of your own and in full mixes. All right, here's a sound demo. And this is a retro wave or synth wave idea I made using triple cheese for every sound except for the drums. Now that you have an idea of some of the sounds that Triple Cheese can make, let's dive into the plugin a bit deeper. Thanks for checking out Triple Cheese. I think it's a cool sounding plugin, even though it's free and not very capable. As the name suggests, it's perfect for cheesy sounds, but it can also create some surprisingly different flavors. Synthesis. Unlike many other synthesizers that use synthesis forms like subtractive, oscillators and filters, frequency modulation, interacting oscillators, additive, piled up sine waves, Triple Cheese mainly uses various forms of comb filters, chromatically tuned delays, to create or modify sound. So, it's a bit different from most of the stuff you've already seen. No, it does not have any analog sounding resonant low pass filters. The idea you have three cheesy modules, hence Triple Cheese, which either generate sound themselves or manipulate what the previous module, i.e., the one to the left, has already created. The first module, CSO1, can only generate sound and there is no module to its left. Each of the three cheesy modules, comb synth oscillators, look like this. You can see we've got them right here, CSO1, CSO2, CSO3. You can turn them on and off, and you can click here on this drop-down menu 
to access all of the different modes. The selector at the top offers eight different modules. The upper row of knobs, tune, detune, vibrato, all determine the module's tuning relative to the note played. Each of the four modulatable parameters, tone, damp, pan, and volume, has a small circle next to the label, i.e. source selector. Click and drag on these to adjust modulation amounts. In the above image, the LFO is modulating tone as well as pan, both negatively. LFO is attached to tone and pan. So each one of these boxes is relative to the knob above it. And you can click on them and change what they're controlling. A lot of options here. No modulation sources have been selected for damp and volume. Click on None and select one from the drop-down menu. While pan and volume may be obvious, tone and damp depend on which mode has been selected for the cheesy module. Here's a chart, and this gives you a much better understanding of what you're going to be able to do with these comb synth oscillators. Modes. Pluck. Creates a pluck based on noise excitation, good for pluck strings. And then you have tone and damp for each one of these modes, and they're going to change specific things about that mode. So for the pluck mode, tone is going to change spectral richness of the noise excitation, and damp is going to change drains higher partials out of the pluck. The decay gets shorter with higher dampening. So even though you're slightly limited in terms of only having three oscillators, you're going to have a lot more options in terms of shaping your sound by using the tone and damp functions as they control different things on each mode. Saw pluck creates a pluck based on a sawtooth waveform. Tone will change, same as above. At zero, it's almost a sine wave. And damp, same as above. Okay, so some of them uh, control the same thing on different modes. Square pluck creates a pluck based on a square wave, same as above, same as above. Bowed creates a constant noisy sound that is somehow reminiscent to bowed strings. Tone is going to make the pitch of the noise noisiness appear higher and lower. If damp is low, it sounds a bit like a violin. If damp is high, it's more ensemble-ish. You'll notice with some of the modes in the table here, they have a star next to them, and that's because they're only available in Cheesy Module 1, this module right here. And you're also going to have some that are only available in Cheesy Module 2 and 3. Blown creates a noisy sound reminiscent of flutes and reeds. Caution, this mode may sound quite out of tune. The tone parameter is going to change. The resonance of the tube closing in on partials can sound overblown. Damp says the more damp, the less noise is inside here. For noise, it's very self-explanatory. It creates white noise, and the damp function is going to change a low-pass filter on the noise. DC injects a DC offset, almost only useful in combination with a subsequent resonator module. Crackle creates crackled noise. You can turn up the tone on crackle to reduce the crackle density, and you can use damp as a low-pass filter on the crackles. Resonator a stereo comb filter replaces the input signal from previous modules by its output. Tone controls feedback of the comb filter, and damp controls a low-pass filter on the feedback. Damp, a combined 12 decibel low-pass and high-pass filter. Center frequency cutoff is tuned relative to the note played. Tone will tune the cutoff of the low-pass filter, and damp will tune the cutoff of the high-pass filter. Stressor, another stereo comb, but with a wave shaper in the feedback path and 100% feedback. Tone will be amplication before wave shaping, and damp will be low-pass filtering after wave shaping. For some of these, it's not completely obvious what they're going to do. I would need to mess around with the synth to really understand how some of the tone and damp controls are going to alter the modes. Resonator and damp. The pan parameter is a stereo balance. Resonator and stressor. Detune affects stereo channels in opposite direction. Modulations. Okay, now we dive a bit into the envelopes we have down here. For modulation, there is a bunch of typical MIDI controls, two classical ADSR envelopes with a fall rise parameter on sustain. That's the FR right here. A keyboard gate control, key pressed or released. A global tempo syncable LFO and vibrato. LFO and vibrato. The latter is basically an LFO for each voice with delay and amplitude modulation, the latter being vibrato. All this stuff should be pretty self-explanatory. Not for everybody, not for me, to be honest. Diving into a new synth is always going to be a bit complicated in terms of being able to create and shape your own sounds. Global VCA, right here in the middle. Well, these are self-explanatory too, aren't they? Volume, VCA, voltage-controlled amplifier. Source, gate, or one of the envelopes. Few, medium, many voices, portamento time, and pitch bend. 
Effects. Chorus 1, wide chorus with a pretty long centered delay. Chorus 2, a bit narrower and better suited for percussive material. Flanger, chorus with short center delay, suited to flanging, turn feedback up. Phaser, classic out of phase, phaser effect. Delay 1, stereo delay synced to host tempo in quarters. Delay 2, stereo delay synced to host tempo in eighth notes. Delay 3, ping pong delay based on quarters and dotted eighths. Reverb, cheesy reverb based on only four delays. Note that you can modulate the delay times of the delay effects, which can add some nice warmth to the sound. Same for reverb, which can sound a bit out of tune if you set too much modulation. Presets. Triple Cheese comes with a bunch of presets by Fine Patch Designers. I was honestly pretty surprised by how good a lot of the built-in presets sound. You can step through those in the currently selected directory using these buttons. Or get the full list of presets in the current directory by clicking on the data display at the top. Version 1.3 includes the new Yuhi standard browser. Click on the presets button in the control bar. It's so feature rich that it takes up most of this new user guide. I thought that was a joke at first, but then you scroll down and it actually does take up multiple pages just going through all of the things built into the preset browser. I'm not going to go through everything in the user manual related to the preset browser, but if you're interested, you can download the Triple Cheese user guide on Yuhi's website. If you go into the settings for the plugin, you have a bunch of options that I think are really useful. You can change the default size. I bumped it up to 120% just so you can see some of the fine tuning controls in the plugin a bit better. I also just noticed in settings that you have a selection for what sidebars you want on the plugin. You can go with wood grain, metal, or cheese. Now that I have some chords laid down in Logic, I'm going to attempt to make a pad from scratch in Triple Cheese. Start off by turning the second oscillator on, change the first oscillator to Bode, and the second oscillator to Saw Pluck. Just turn the volume down a bit. For a pad, I'm guessing I'm going to want a slower attack for the envelopes. Coarse tune and tune it up 12 semitones, and I'll tune this one up 24 so that I have two octaves. That's still pretty gritty. Maybe try some vibrato on the bode, and definitely a longer release. I don't want that pad to fade out right when the chords end. I want to have it hold. Now on the bowed mode, tone is going to make the pitch of the noisiness appear higher or lower. Okay, let's see what that does. Maybe I can modulate one of the different controls down here. I'll use envelope one to modulate tone on the bowed mode on CSO one. I'll use envelope two for damp on bowed. Damp is going to change it from sounding like a violin or an ensemble, and maybe I want an ensemble sound. Cool, I'm thinking I could add a top layer, kind of a flute sound, and I'll use blown for that. Just turn the volume down quite a bit, and I'll tune this all the way up as well. Put some reverb on that. Maybe I can take one of these noise sources and put a left to right pan on it using the LFO. Let's see what that sounds like on the saw pluck. 
So I'm going to use LFO to modulate pan, and I'll turn that all the way up. That's some really cool left to right movement. I could even slow it down a bit. Currently it's set to an eighth note with a triangle waveform. And I kind of like triangle, but maybe I'll try sine. Try that an octave down again. Whoops. I do kind of like that two octaves up. Maybe I'll also pan the bowed sound. I think it's a bit too aggressive. I could change the noise source and see what that sounds like. That's really nice. I'll change CSO one back to Bode, turn it way down. Maybe I can link volume to envelope two. Yes, yeah, so you can definitely create some interesting sounds. It's a very nice chill pad here. I'm still not super familiar with all of the controls, and so I'm kind of limited in terms of what I can create. But even just after messing around for about 10 minutes, I created a really nice sounding chill pad. So it's worth a shot, especially if you want to learn synthesis. I think that sound turned out really nice. <laughs> 